Welcome to Gears Action Growth, shifting business culture one conversation at a time. My name is Christy Mori and I'm joining Dr. Josephine Palermo, whose superpower is to create business cultures that transform organizations team by team. Today, we'll be discussing good self-care methods and how incorporating them into your life is also good for business. Hope you get value from it. Uh, three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Hey, Joe. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Well, okay, except um, not great news about the <laughs> yep. pending lockdown in Melbourne. So That's I'm right. So reeling from that. Mm. Yeah, but it's only a week, isn't it? Or it's the predicted week. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And I think... Um, You know, this is a really timely topic that we're talking about today in terms of self-care because I think as we go into like another lockdown, it is only a week, but, you know, it feels like it feels like we're going backwards and those old anxieties are raised again. So it's it is, you know, it it does it does produce anxiety, I think. Right. Yeah. Even mm. even the calmest people probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a reminder that it's like, oh, we're in lockdown again. I know exactly. we're so fortunate here, though, in Australia, because I have friends in Canada who have COVID, and oh. and the states as well. So oh, it's wow. just an absolute yeah, like a gong show. It sounds like <sighs> just like kids getting COVID and then the oh, parents no. getting infected, and it's just like this reminder of yeah. to yeah because in melbourne i feel like it was a bit more relaxed these past few months like people it were you know you and i we both at separate times even flew on a plane tasmania yeah yeah exactly. i mean that's not irresponsible we were allowed yes <laughs> like we didn't go out of the country tasmania is still in australia but yeah yeah it was just this really yeah kind of normal feeling mm. a little bit no, yes. Normal but different. It felt like things were getting back to normal. And I think this reminds us of the reality of what's happening, on, you know, globally as well as yes. in, in the country. And, yes. Um, so, but, but look, it's, it's, it's a different um, sort of set of circumstances because we don't have the government support we had in the first lockdown. So I know a lot of people are going to be really worried about that, you know, missing income. And um, that's a very real concern for a lot of people. So... It, it is, it, it, even though we've done this before and we know we can get through it, it, it right. is a different set of circumstances. So, it's a different um, layer. So I, it yeah. is, it's a different layer. So I think, you know, I think we just have to acknowledge that and yes. um, and and not be dismissive of people's real feelings about it and real sense of, you know, sort of anxiety about it. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is very timely because today we actually had planned to speak about forming good habits and what self-care is and why it's important Mm -hmm. and how it affects us in everyday life but in business life as well so we'll just kick it off with why self-care is important so joe um should we define self-care or yeah so 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 self-care is the the moments and the times that we take to make sure that we're we're really um, filling our cup. So a lot of what we do every day is giving to others, or you know we do this at work. We we meet our obligations in the home front. We're also meeting the demands of people around us. We're you know giving of ourselves. We're giving of our time. We're giving of our knowledge. We're giving of our you know even our intellectual um, resources. We we're giving to others. We're we're often um, doing that without even thinking about it but what it does do is you know in some ways deplete you know if we think about the resources that we have as a human being we have you know we, we have a physical body and then we have a psychological system that works for us and then we have an unconscious system so all those systems uh, have in some ways a finite resource and and all those demands you know take that resource from us and what we've got to do is fill that tank we've got to fill the cup and so it's it's the time we take the things we do that fill that for us so that we then can be effective and productive Mm -hmm. and you know create um wonderful moments with others and and in our lives and so and, and you know we we can't 
continue to deplete resources without putting more, you know, without taking some back for us to kind of fill that cup. And I think what happens in a very busy life is that we we prioritise others sometimes more than ourselves, and so that self care is is becomes a smaller and smaller part of our our lives. Right. Think about, for example, like you could think about a week or a month or even a year or a day of your life as a pizza. And if we, if you broke up the the sort of you know the pizza into slices, think about the number of slices where you're giving yourself to others, you're giving your resources to others, and think about the number of slices where you're doing something for yourself to really you know take take back some of that some of that energy that you that you that perhaps has been depleted. And mm-hmm. if you're if you've got so many slices that are going out. But no, no slices that are about, you know, what, what you need to keep yourself healthy and beautiful and, and, and vibrant, then that's what a, that, 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 will, that will have circumstances and right. consequences in the end. Yeah, they'll have yeah. yeah. And so, um, Joe, specifically, um, maybe we could share, like, what we think in our own terms is self-care for us personally. And maybe our mm-hmm. listeners could yeah. resonate with that and they could um, also email us later on to share their tips or what they do as well. Because we're trying to create a community here to, yeah, just have share knowledge and wisdom with each other in business and in life. So, yeah, Joe, oh, what, yeah. Um, yeah, what are some specific things that you do for yourself that you uh, fills you up? Yes, yeah. So the things that really fill my cup is in relation to social connection. So when I'm, when I, because I, I'm actually, you know, a raving extrovert. So I get, <laughs> I, I'm not like everyone, not everyone is like me, I understand that. But I get a lot of energy from being around people. So for me, I, I get a lot of energy from being around people in a social environment. So, it, it not, uh, you know, I get, I get energy from being with people at work as well. But what I need to really fill my cup is that part of the week or, you know, um, even if I look at a month, there, there has to be some spots there where it's just fun with friends or, yeah. or family because I love getting family together too. I love chatting. I love the coffees. I love dancing. Mm. I love, you, you know, having fun. I love doing physical things. And it's that social connection. It's the hugs and the kisses and the, the, um, the laughter. And that has to be part of my routine and what I noticed particularly last year when we had so many days in lockdown and so many repeating lockdowns where we were sort of cut off from others I found that really hard and it brought back to me that I really need that and what happens is if I don't get that I'm I'm I I, there's a part of me that just doesn't get filled and I I I can I'm more stressed I'm you know I'm just not a happy person so for me it's definitely social connection and and then second to that or you know kind of equal in some ways I really um, need to ensure that I'm living to my purpose so meaning is a really important thing for me I need to kind of be able to link all the things I do in work um, family um, leisure um, you know, what I do with my community, I need right. to kind of link it into yeah. a meaningful life. So for me, um, in, I've made decisions in my life along the way where maybe I've turned down a lot of like a high paying job for another role that had more meaning for me. So, mm. that, and again, not everyone needs what I need or what others need, but but there are meaning and purpose. I mean, there's research that really that shows this that meaning and purpose in particular keeps you young across your lifespan right because and and this is you know we we, we did um, social scientists did research a long time ago uh, well you know, decades ago on what happens to particularly people that retire and you know this was particularly uh, you know I'm talking about maybe in the 80s um, and 90s where the mode was you 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 work, 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 and then you retire, and then you have all this leisure time. And what, what the researchers were finding was that particularly for males, they would retire and then have a lot of chronic health sy- symptoms flare up and actually have a, a shorter physical lifespan um, than people who 
didn't wait until retirement to kind of create meaning and purpose in their lives. And the difference is, is you can, when you've got, when you've got meaning and purpose and you, you, you kind of create moments across your life as well as into retirement, then that keeps you um, vital. It, it kind of keeps you, um, it gives you a reason to get up every day. Mm. And I've got a really great example of this. Um, so my mum, she's 77, she's very vibrant, 77. Uh, and she used to work, she used to be a cleaner. So she's a, a you know migrant woman. And um, so um, she used to uh, be a cleaner and she was great at cleaning, you know. Um, yeah. And, but it was very physical work. And so she got to the, a point in her sort of mid-60s where she really had to give that up. And And what I found, though was that she she gave that up and then there was it felt like you know there was this void in her life and she lived alone so she she really needed to find something and I kept saying to her why don't you you know why don't you think about what you'd love to do and just do it or maybe you need to volunteer and she didn't want to do any of those things and then but what it was she needed to find her niche and she mm-hmm. did find her niche eventually um, because she loves to dance, like it's part of it kind of runs in our family. But right. she loves to dance and she would go to these Italian social clubs. And um, eventually, she became a committee member on one of the Italian social wow. club committees. And, um, and now she's, she's just, um, she's actually the public relations officer now on wow. her committee. <laughs> wow. and, and she will, she will get, for example, they'll have an event once every three weeks. And she will get 100 to 200 people in a room just by getting on the phone and getting people to, you know, to kind of book. Um, she's amazing at what she does. And, and I was talking to her the other day and she said, you know what, I, you know, people say to me, oh, you work too hard for the committee and, you know, it takes up too much time. And she was saying to them, but I love it. It gives me a reason to get up out of bed in the morning. And, and also it gives her, because she's a bit like me, she needs that social connection. So yeah. it gives her... It gives her all the things that fill her cup. It doesn't, even though she's putting a lot of hours into it and it's a volunteer, you know, it's a volunteer job. Um, mm. So it's things, so those two things in particular are really important so for me. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I found them, you know, I, when, I fa- when you find something and it works, you have to, then, then they become the no, non-negotiables in my diary. Yeah. Um, so that's how I make that work. Yeah, that's so good. And what about you, Christy? What do you What do you do? Like, because I know you you manage yeah. a lot of sort of um, you you manage a lot. You manage a lot of stress as well. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, it's funny because I was thinking back to the last week where I was not that good, and I think I had a moment where I was just like, "Joe, I'm not good." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This is this is on the private side, so I yeah. won't really do it, divulge on our our podcast. But yeah. yeah, we just had an incident that I was just yeah. like, I think this is. A, I was like, I'm human, and this is a yeah. bit much. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is like escalation point, and I was like, usually I think I can deal with this. I was like, today yeah. I'm not feeling this at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I. Yeah, so go- going back from that moment, actually, because I was like, oh, why am I reacting this way? Like, r- like a-, a little bit less patient than normal, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I was just, oh, this week, p- for example, like I didn't um, n- nourish myself properly, uh. a- as properly as possible. So that is, and then those things take time as well. I know, like, but that's the thing, though. It's like, I guess, what we're willing to put our time into. So to cook your own meals and prep your own food, yes. Yes. sometimes that does take time. But for oh. me, I think those are the things. Like, yes, it does take time. But um, also, Andrew, my husband, he's very health conscious. So, like, when I don't do those parts, and obviously he does his, he contributes so much as well. And that's, but it's like when I'm not doing the contribution either, it kind of gets me down as well. Mm. Because it's like, not only did I not prep anything, basically, it's like we're eating on the fly is like, yeah, it's just you just make bad choices sometimes, like, because that's what's available. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so not making space, I think, to do, like, just even, like, prep your own food, that's one thing. And then I think time is important to me, like, not having enough 
time mm. of reflection for myself so that means getting rid of like mental clutter for me is yeah. very important so things that pop into our minds when we're still and we're sitting and some of those maybe I haven't really cleared out maybe I've just carried maybe last mm. week I was carrying yeah. a whole bunch of different things with me so that's I know that I have to do this kind of work so that I could give to others because I'm also involved um, a lot with my church who in young adults ministry. So um, a lot of people who are younger than me, you know, they come to me and they have, you know, all these things that they're they're struggling with. And it's like if I am not able to do things for myself I'm definitely not be able to do it for them so so because when I think of my role and my responsibility for them even I just think oh I really want to give to them so what do I need to do for myself and then same for higher spaces as well like Mm -hmm. I just think like what can I do so that I give to higher spaces which is the co-working space that you and Shu own Mm -hmm. as well and you know these different elements of just like family work friends um yeah and then our new family member finn our furry family member he's (laughs) yeah he has a lot of medical conditions and we have to monitor a lot as well so there's just different things that are pulling at me Mm -hmm. i think last or this month we're still in may so for me it's like definitely just um uh time and also like Mm -hmm prepping myself for success so that means Mm. prepping my own food making sure i sleep um decent hours and these are things that everybody says like all the health things says these things but it's because i realize they keep repeating these things because this is sort of like an essential thing for us to function like to physically feed ourselves well to physically Mm. rest Mm -hmm. it's like it's always on repeat because these are kind of like the essentials it's not like a back secondary thing so yeah, the old, I think the older I am getting, I'm definitely not willing to give those things up because I just know that I will just crash and burn yes. out. So, yeah, those are just some of the things I think that I focus on is just getting the essentials right. Yes. Because I know that That's if I right. get the essentials right and I give myself that time and space, then... I know that I can give more out, so, mm-hmm. yeah. I, and I, I, I love that because you're right, Christy, it's not rocket science. We know it's sleep, you know, exercise, nutrition. And it's like, we know, you know, and, and also, right. you know, some time for mindfulness and just, we know. And But, but why do we then plan, or, or maybe we don't plan, why do we succumb to the demands where we end up with a week that is just crazy and mad? And right. So this is the thing, and and I think, I, and this is the, the, the this is the you know if we could unlock that, that would be that we need that key because a lot of people go yeah I go I get it I get it but why aren't I doing that why am right. I why am I choosing yeah. to do all these other things before I prioritize all that other stuff and and partly it's because we maybe don't value those we don't value our um our own sort of sense of well-being enough yeah um and then also partly because you know habits take a while to to um Mm -hmm. to you know you need you need about three months of doing something before it becomes a habit so without thinking about it so what we do is maybe we try to change something and it doesn't quite work and we don't stick at it and then we don't get the reward for it and so right. we go back to sort of, oh, it's easier. So, for example, easier to get takeout, easier, sometimes mm. cheaper, you know, to, mm. um, to you know, easier. Uh, like, for example, I was at, um, I was at work uh, quite late last night and, um, I, you know, I could have gone to the supermarket and bought some stuff and then just had something a bit more healthier. But instead, it was just easier to get, mm. you know, something delivered. And, right. and then I felt bad about it because I know the food wasn't as nutritious as what I could have, you know, I should have. I really wanted a salad and falafel and I ended up with something else that wasn't as nutritious. So. <laughs> I've been there last week. I've been there last week. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's easier. So what, what, we've, what we've kind of got to do is how do you remind yourself to prioritize yourself? How do you remind yourself that? Because 
because it's only until you get to that moment where you go, oh, my God, I'm actually not putting my best self forward here. Why? Right. What am yeah. I? It's only, and, and, and so it's only when you get to that point where, where, or, where you sort of then kind of reflect. And I think that partly, I think what the, the, the reason why these things are sometimes hard is because we, we sometimes, particularly women, uh, I, you know, and, and not, I think because of the way we're socialised from early on to, to, to really care more about others than ourselves in mm. some ways. Um, and also because, you know, women have the majority of family responsibilities still, right. even, even today when, yep. you know, they, Very they true. work. And, and so, so there's, you know, there's, it's, it's sometimes harder to say to everybody around you, no, I have to prioritise this time for me. And so yeah, that's sometimes it, it, that's the the reality of it. Sometimes it's really difficult. It means you've got to. It's almost like you've got to keep kind of fighting for that in some ways. So yeah. So my it's interesting because as you were speaking, I was reminded by I think it's called uh, the Power of Yes. It's like a book. Have you yeah. heard of it, Joe? Yes. It's like yes, the Power of Yes. It's like a really, favorite. Okay, yeah. I've never read it. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> For me, my power is to say no. Mm -hmm. Um, This is totally opposite of that. And I want to read that book for sure. But um, as you were speaking, I realized, um, yeah, the last five years, like I say no to a lot of things. Like I was raised, in a sense, I was raised to take on as much work as possible because my parents were also immigrants. Like Mm -hmm. they were both from Japan and they moved to Canada. I'm originally Canadian and... um, but like they also had to start afresh like very Mm -hmm. similar to um like your parents as well from italy yeah so i mean we got to benefit you know everything from being in these i guess western developed countries and not that japan's not developed it is but it's just a different cultural place and since um and you know they they had to launch their own business um not by choice but that's what they had to do um when they went to canada so they worked like almost like 24 7 i think and it really took a toll on my dad because he eventually got very very ill because i think Mm. he didn't it was just too much Mm -hmm. and but see, my mom has a pretty go-getter personality. She's quite extroverted, I think. And that's also another thing is like not understanding that, you know, my dad wasn't as extroverted or had the same energy levels right. as her. Yeah. So she would be always on the go. But like, I think like, yeah, it's it's easier to reflect back than it is to be in the moment and reflect on yourself, I think, sure. sometimes. For sure. Yeah, but coming from, um, yeah, some my parents who built their own business and worked like 20 20 hours basically Mm. maybe like yeah like that's crazy to me but like one day yeah well yeah yeah, like because they just they felt like they really had to and yes I totally understand I think it's a luxury for some people to think like oh I could just schedule my own hours and but to be honest like I earn a lot less because of the way I schedule my essentials Mm -hmm. and then that's what I'm saying to everyone is like if I had doubled I could definitely double my income or triple my income even Mm -hmm. to to be honest with everybody but what I'm saying is um you know I've I have spoken to my husband and he works full time and I know that there are sacrifices to both those lifestyles. Yes. Um, working full time or working less so that you can get the essentials right. But I, I just know that if I don't, ha- if I'm not healthy, I can't pursue these other yes. things. So yes. even if I'm going at a slower rate, I will pursue those essentials first. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I guess I just wanted to share that with everyone because maybe some people who are listening to this, they don't have the luxury yes, um, exactly. to not work nine to five. Yes, and yeah, like exactly. there's children, there's uh, dependents. And I just wanted to respect that as well because I totally understand that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, but, but, but well, I think what you're saying, though, is you've worked out what your kind of equilibrium point is, you know, where mm-hmm. that balance is for you. Yeah. And then you say no to things because you know that if you say yes beyond that, it's not going to be great for you. You're not going to be putting your best self forward for them. Right. And it's, it just doesn't work for you. And I think 
you know, for, for others, that equilibrium or balance point will be somewhere else, you know. Mm. So, but it, so it's respecting everybody's choices there. But also, even if, even if you're in a position where, you know, you can't control your work hours, and a lot of people are in that position. Yes. You can probably control what happens after work a little bit more. Or, and, and, and this is the other thing. Self-care doesn't have to take hours and hours and hours a week. Right. It can be it can be that five minutes you take to just go and notice some leaves on the trees. It can be that. It doesn't have to be, you know, spending an hour and a half in meditation every day, or right. or it doesn't have to be spending an hour and a, an hour at the gym every day. Um, it can, it's got to be something that works for you, and right. you know, when, especially when we, and and when we're talking about you know, things that are that you do have to fit in like sleep and exercise and nutrition. I think a lot of the choices we make are um, sometimes because we're not prioritizing that, but we're actually making choices for things that are harmful to us. Like, you know, and, and, and I get it, you know, I am the, the Netflix, you know, um, queen. I actually have have been binging on all the series on Netflix. I get it, but I know that that doesn't fill me. It doesn't fill my cup. So, I know. It's yeah, just the right? gratification yeah, though it is. of it's like just laying down. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and letting it kind of like stream past you. And it's yeah, almost exactly. feels like I can't even compare it. Like yeah. it almost feels like something that, you know, people I don't know. You know that there's something better for you, That's but right. it's almost like I'm too tired, I know. and I'd rather just have this right now. Uh, exactly, exactly. And look, those—that's fine. Those choices are fine. But what I'm mm. saying is, we do make choices about those things. We can also make choices about doing something that really fills our cup every day as well. But mm. the other thing is, we've got to make it easy for ourselves. So, so sure. for, I'll give you an—I'll give you an example. Like yeah. I, I um. I'm not great at meditating. I've had, I've had, <laughs> you know, when I meditate, it's fabulous. And I see the, the results and the benefits right. straight away. So yeah. it's not that I'm not seeing the benefit. It's just that it's, it's one of those habits that I just, you know, I find difficult to get into my, my routine. Yes. So what I, what I decided to do was, was think, well, how can I make that super easy for myself? And I thought, okay, what, what part of the day am I just standing still? And I thought, I'm pretty much standing still every day when I have a shower. But right, let's incorporate that. And then I thought, can I do some meditation when I'm in the shower? Absolutely. I could do uh, a meditation for about three to four minutes in the shower. No problem. Right. Then right. I thought, I've got to make it super easy for myself because my, you know, the, the limbic brain is really dumb and I'll probably go into the shower and do the same routine I do without including the meditation. How can <laughs> I remind myself? that mm. I need to do a meditation. So you know what? If you go into my bathroom right now, I have a sticky note on top of <laughs> yeah. uh, on the wall, not in the shower, but you know, near the shower. Yeah. And it says it says because I do a chakra meditation, it says chakra shower. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. This is perfect, Joe, because actually the next this brings us into the next <gasps> question of how do you bring in self-care to your life? So that's perfect yeah. what you're doing in the shower and yeah. the behavioral process of it is great because you're making it easy as possible. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's exactly. true. Making it easy as possible. Make it easy and don't try to change everything at once, you know. And so yeah. so and, and 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 I actually think you've got to People will tell you, oh, you, you know, you, you must do this and you must meditate for this long and you must go to the gym. And all of that is crap. Do it, do it yeah. in a way that suits you. Because I think even if you're getting, even if I'm getting those three minutes every day, that's got to be better than doing nothing, than doing yeah. nothing around mindfulness, right? So, yeah. So, yeah. so I think that, so, you know, so I'm trying to bring that in and, and it's got to work for you. And then the other thing is I don't beat myself up when I miss a day. Right. That's important too. Because mm. because what what I think happens too is when you particularly when you're trying to create a new habit, you might miss a day or you might miss a, do, a few days and you and then you tell yourself, "Well, it's not working. I can't can't make this work." And so you you almost don't persist for long enough for the habit to form. Right. So and you've it's like to keep persisting until yeah. the habit forms. Yeah, it's interesting because I recently read a quote about meditation and it says a monk said your perfection doesn't mean anything here. 
Oh, I love that. Or something like this. I think yeah. I'm misquoting, but it's so true because I just think back to my life and I think how many times have I given up on maybe trying to run a marathon or something like that mm-hmm. because I thought I missed a day or yeah. I missed even a week. Like, yeah. And I think, oh, I'll never get back. So I should just stop and just stop. Yeah. yeah, just stop. And that's the trick almost like the brain plays yes. on us. It's like, oh, you yes. missed a day, even a month or whatever. Yeah. Like for some people, it could be years that they've not done something, yeah. I feel like. And they think it's too late. Yes. And that is like the place where we have to almost trick our brain and say, it's not too late. Yeah. I can just do five minutes today or something that's like right. that. Exactly. Yeah. In terms of cooking, um, for practical reasons, I, I like I feel like. Um, we really need to provide like practicality as you were saying like the shower example is perfect because that provides practicality like for me I just uh, spend a few hours roasting vegetables every Mm -hmm. week yeah and um, that's gonna Ah, that actually that actually saves a lot of time and things in the long run and I know Mm -hmm. that this feels like a very big and disciplined thing to do but it's like yeah if you just spend like an hour just chopping prepping 30 minutes like it's not very long and you just keep putting it in the to the oven and basically you'll be done and then you could just put them in containers and then you're done Uh, and then you'll have like you'll have vegetables for the week really yeah Yeah. it's like those kinds of things like it's like i'm not making a gourmet meal i'm simply chopping vegetables and putting them on a baking tray and olive oil and and that's it that's all i'm doing but i just know that it would set us up for the week a bit more exactly because it's like if you're hungry and you're stressed and you have you like chances are i will definitely you know get takeout or delivery or something fast because our brain just will not fight us they'll be like yep yep it's too stressful it's too stressful to cook your own food exactly it's like it's too so easy to just and i speak that from a very western sense Mm -hmm. i know that that's another luxury and i'm aware of that Mm. but but Mm. look yeah but absolutely christy i think that's a really easy thing to do by the way do you do you bake cauliflower yeah it's really really good do you like it whole baked cauliflower love it yeah Yeah, yeah. there's you know we don't eat um meat really so uh Mm -hmm. we oh there's a recipe i have to share with you and for everybody it's um for hot hot wings but we use cauliflower oh yeah yeah I actually, yeah. my, my 10 year old nephew who doesn't like veggies yeah. loves my baked cauliflower. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, that's a huge compliment. Yeah, I love Yeah, yeah, I love it. So, yeah. Recipes, but these are some please. behavioral <laughs> things, I guess. <laughs> exactly. For you, it's but, meditating in the shower. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you were talking about the craving you get. Craving is really important because it's a really important part of habit forming. Because what we, what we tend to do is we we have a kind of like something triggers us and we tr- it triggers a craving mm. and the idea is is to not see that craving as the thing that's kind of the habit so because that craving is just a physiological response so i do this sometimes when i'm feeling like like i'm trying to not totally eliminate sugar from my diet for example but i i try to limit the amount of sugar i have but sometimes right. i really crave sugar Right. And, and 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 so there's almost like a pause or a minute not even it's a you know a millisecond of time where i have to acknowledge that that's a physiological craving and having something sugary is a way of responding to that but also having like you know some baked cauliflower is also a way of responding to that so so there's right. almost like we there's a, a level of self-awareness that I think comes into this as well because you, when you, when you, you know, when you to kind of take a third person perspective, like you're, you're, you know, almost like standing above yourself and watching yourself, we really are, you know, there's a lot of physiological responses that our, that right. our bodies have and our brain interprets in a particular way, mm. but it doesn't mean your response has to, you're not a slave to the response. Right. You, know, you can't. Right. Maybe you can't stop the craving because that's a physiological thing. Um, but you. But you're not a slave to the response. So it's about just watching yourself and going. At, you know, when when am I triggered on that? Where, you know, what do I? 
what do I, how do I usually respond? Could I slow things down a bit and not respond straight away and then make a different choice? Yeah. That's good. Um, I'm also thinking about people who maybe are not there yet or that's not part of Mm -hmm. their life or that's not how they're part of their thinking process. And um, recently, I know know that I keep talking about my cat, our new cat, uh, Finn. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, he's just (laughs) snoozing actually like behind my shoulder right now um, as we speak because last time he was meowing because he didn't want to be apart from us. So (laughs) so now he's just snoozing away by my shoulder, but he he scratches our couch actually sometimes. (gasps) So I have to um even though he's 13 years old and he knows he's not supposed to um we've provided scratching things around the couch because that's Mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do or and i've put like a sheet over the couch so that it you know and it it's fine like he's not he didn't destroy it It was just we saw it and we were like okay we can't take the sheet off so now it just looks like there's this permanent (laughs) sheet on the couch but what i'm saying is that with cats like um, y- y- like we shouldn't discipline them because that makes them fear us because they don't understand. Yeah. So we have to give them other choices. Yes. So um, do you know where I'm going with yes, this? Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, so we have I to did. give him other choices. Exactly. So I, when we saw him doing that, I didn't freak out. I just put the sheet over. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't shout at him. I didn't... Um, pat him away or swat him or I didn't do any of that because I didn't want him to be scared of us so I just put the sheet over and then I you know I kind of like showed him the other options kind of like hey look at this like scratching post look at this corrugated cardboard we got for you and then he sort of got distracted and he stopped and then he started scratching the other thing so it's almost like as the sheet went off the couch he was like oh a new thing yes Mm. i i forgot like he was like he didn't realize there was a sheet on the couch all this time and he was like this is a new scratching post for me but it's not (laughs) and i thought oh so we have to give ourselves choices so as you were saying about the sugar thing maybe it's a cup of tea maybe it's an orange i don't know what it will be for people but it's like the it's almost like the simplest thing we can do for ourselves so we could Simple. set yeah, set ourselves up. Yes. Is if we're yes. going to be tempted, it's like don't have anything sweet in the house maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they say that too. <laughs> yeah. I exactly. yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. It'll just be something we have to experiment yeah. with, but yeah. we have to just be ready, I think, for ourselves to like if we're going to eat chocolate, then it's like and we don't have it. It's like, what else would we go what to? Else? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and you know, and, and look, I'm I'm all for chocolate. I love chocolate, but mm. and it's about rewarding yourself too. So this is the other thing, and and with self care as well, all of this is about um, getting getting some routines in your life that really give you the benefit, but also you're rewarding yourself for that. So it's 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 not about just because because you know, I, I couldn't live an austere discipline totally disciplined life i know some right. people can do that but i can't i have to give myself rewards i have to i have to be a bit cheeky sometimes and you know kind of cheat a little bit and and yeah. i have to i have to change it up a bit and yeah that that's that's the way that that works for me so you, it really just has to work for you for sure and that was that's basically our next question our last one is how do people put this place in their lives practical mm. ways of doing this so yeah, for me, it's, <laughs> and my cat, it's, um, yeah, it's like providing other choices as well. Yeah. And the yeah. other thing I do, Chrissy, just to end up, so mm. I, so even though, um, and I've always done this, I'm kind of this mad calendar uh, management person. I have mm. different colors in my calendar. I use a digital cam- calendar, different True. colors. So, you know, there's colors for work and then there's colors for the things I want to do, which are more my self care. And I actually put them in the diary and I, I don't, you know, I kind of, I, what I do is I, I, I look at the week and I go, these are my non-negotiables. So when you've got some non-negotiables, you then, you then, you, you then have a place from which to say no. And yeah. what you'll find is that most people will kind of be, they'll adapt. So for example, if I can't do a meeting at that time because that's the time I normally go, you know, say to the gym or get my exercise in, people will normally adapt to that and go, oh, okay, we'll do it another time. So I think that, uh, and particularly I think one of the great 
um, trends in some ways that's happened over the last couple of years. You know, it, it's one of the, it's been one of those sort of I guess surprise benefits of you know the pandemic has been more of an idea that we can work flexibly. So more people are working right. from home. More people are working flexibly, and and what that means is that maybe we can kind of control our day a little bit more, and you know, and 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 set aside those times to just do those things that we know fill our cup. Right. Yeah. Hey, I forgot to ask you just for fun. What is your go-to treat as we wrap up here? Oh, you know what? I love, um, I actually love really, really dark chocolate. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Above love really 70%, I should say. I'm the mm-hmm. same. Love yeah, chocolate, yeah. and uh, yeah. I've, I, and I'll say sometimes. Um, so I'm gluten free and dairy free, but you can get these amazing uh, biscuits, like like chocolate cookies, uh, choc chip <laughs> cookies, choc chip cookies. There's a lot of good ones with the gluten free <laughs> yeah. and awesome dairy free. So, yeah. Even that, it, just being gluten free and dairy free, I feel like helps so much. Yeah. Just because you I mean, can't I've got have it. Intolerances, yeah. Yeah, yeah you just can't have it. Yeah, so I think exactly. That I can't have it. Yeah, what I like you, fries. Like fries, probably. Oh, like okay. yeah, and like mm. deep fries. Like it's Yum. the worst thing you could. It's one of the worst things you could have, probably. Yeah. Look, I've watched a documentary on how fried food affects your heart and stuff. Oh. Yeah, and I was like, I know, I know. And that's <laughs> <why>. <laughs> In moderation. Moderation. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Or it's After called you, chips. Uh, yeah, chips. That's right. After you've done all your self care properly, you can have a little bit sometimes. Yeah, a little bit is good because yeah. I think if we restrict anything too much, maybe our yeah our mind will want it more. Oh yeah, you get obsessed. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so obsession yeah. is bad, I think, in bad. in this area. So. Yeah, so we'll be wrapping up here today, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. I certainly had a good chat, and I feel like I enjoyed it very much. So um, we definitely want to hear some questions or your self-care tips as well that we could share with everyone. And please send them to josephinegeardforgrowth.biz. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. And, yeah, don't be too hard on yourself also this week. So, bye everyone. Bye, Joe.